and welcome to Coach's Decision, a weekly talk show that covers sports topics from the Bay Area and beyond. My name is Thomas Todd. I am joined here today in the lovely KSCO studios by my co-host, honorary Jamaican Joaquin Nagel. How are you doing, Joaquin? I could be doing better, Thomas, if the U.S. had managed to beat Jamaica. But see, some people say, I know they can't believe Jamaica, they have a Gold Cup team. Now, what we're talking about is Jamaica has defeated the U.S. 2-1 to one in the Gold Cup in a shocker. They have never been to the Gold Cup final. The U.S. had won three straight. What happened? Well, you have to look at a few factors. First, you have to consider that the U.S. has deprioritized uh, the Gold Cup over the years in favor of prioritizing the World Cup. That's been part of Jurgen Klinsmann's, Jurgen Klinsmann's sort of overhaul of how the U.S. men's national team operates. But also, you have to just you have to think if... In soccer, when you give up an early goal or two, it's really easy for another team to park the bus and sit on their weed. I know all we can do is make cool runnings jokes because that's all we're capable of, but shouldn't Jurgen Klinsmann gain a few pounds, pop on a Hawaiian shirt, grease up his hair a little bit, and go as John Candy from Cool Runnings? Wouldn't that be the best? Inspire the boys? Inspire the U.S. men's national team to beat Jamaica's reggae boys? That's that's the nickname of their team. Their, their nickname is the Reggae Boys. That's okay. not just an off-the-cuff comment. Okay, I just I want him to be Irv Blitzer so bad, and not including the cheating history in the Olympics. You know, anyone who's seen Cool Runnings knows what we're talking. Well, you about. can replace that history with a uh, glory with the German national team and a World Cup winner. Okay, we'll take that. Uh, so on today's show, Joaquin and I are going to talk about James Harden's fake MVP, Zach Greinke's real scoreless streak, and Barry Bonds' final day in court. We'll also be joined by a couple special guests, including ESP. Dan Zimborski. He'll tell us who are the favorites to win the World Series and our old show favorite, Chad Oakland Jolin, to talk about what he wants to rant about today, which we will find out coming up later in the show. U.S. stunning loss to Jamaica. Move on. Try to win the World Cup. Reshuffle the roster. That's the ultimate goal, right? It's all about qualification, really. Like The, the period done. between World Cups is just about qualifying for the next World Cup. And, and that, that, there's, no, there's no issue there. They've qualified. So that it's it's only that cycle that you have to worry about. You don't really have to worry about the Gold Cup itself. Okay, great. I am incensed right now. It happens a lot in this show. Uh, the player's ball, the not the player haters ball. The uh, more in the outcast vein than the Dave Chappelle vein. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, BET put on a show called The Player's Ball where NBA players give each other awards, which sounds like the dumbest thing ever, and turns out it is. They gave James. Is it, is it dumber than the Players Tribune? No, it's not dumber than the Players' Tribune, but it's in that same vein. So we, we can talk about that because what happened was they gave James Harden the best basketball player, the M, their version of the MVP, over Steph Curry. Now what's happening in sports media is the sports word is being emphasized over the media, and that can be a good thing because a lot of media members are blowhards, a lot of media members are self-serving. But so are athletes. Why are we letting athletes control their own images? Why are we letting them control what they want all the time? The th- reason that writers and journalists exist is so that public figures can be held accountable for their actions, for when they're acting improperly, when they're not playing well. Players are never going to hold each other accountable well, it's, like it's that. Well, it's not necessarily about controlling their own image. It's about expressing their own opinions, right? I, I don't want their opinion on almost any subject. Well, yeah, sure. Three athletes a generation but then, have opinions but then that why, you respect. Then why do ex-athletes who are now part of the media why do why do their opinions hold more sway? I think you have to you have to take it uh, for what it is, where the af- uh, athletes and people and former athletes especially value different things than media members value when it comes to MVP discussions. So what are they valuing? You know, James Harden had a wonderful season. He had the best season of his career, uh, one of the best of the last five years of any season of any player at his position. But Steph Curry was better. He was more efficient. He was on a better team. He won more games. He ended up winning the championship. Shouldn't that justify it? I think we as fans and media members uh, value efficiency more than players. Players wind up valuing things like minutes per game and how much did they add to their team individually, like if you just took them off the team. Steph Curry having a great supporting cast and a great team around him hurts him in the players' minds when it comes to uh, MVP discussions. See, I think what happened was players look at Steph Curry and they don't even understand what's quite happening yet. I don't think they have the perspective because no one has ever played the game like he's playing it right now. James Harden plays a very classic version of the game. You know, he shoots a lot of contested jumpers. He drives to the lane. He lives at the free throw line. There's NBA players who played like that for decades. Uh, You didn't get as many foul calls back in the day. Ask Isaiah Thomas. But uh, I just don't think they understand Steph Curry yet. 
But the numbers hash it out. I just don't think the players care about the numbers as much. Well, I think this is a rehash of the sort of debate of should Felix Hernandez win the Cy Young Award. I think it's a, it's people coming to grasp with uh, coming to grips with efficiency and what that means in terms of uh, end product on the court. But we've seen these Steph Curry games. Everybody has because they happen in the playoffs. They happen in the finals. Felix Hernandez's games happen in obscure markets, you know, up in Seattle where only regional sports fans are watching. Steph Curry has played national televised games where he scored 30, 35 points, hit eight or nine threes. People know. People have seen. And these players especially should know. He's the scariest well, player. Well, pe- people see the capacity and they see the numbers. They gave him the best uh, clutch performer award, right? Right. But they but they don't see the averages and they're not they're saying, oh, he doesn't do it game in and game out. And, oh, his coaching staff gives him days of rest and they just don't buy into that. Well, they gave him the clutch performer award because James Harden was not clutch in the playoffs. But part of the argument following the regular season was that James Harden was so much better in the last five minutes of games. And Steph Curry didn't even have to be in those games in the last five minutes to try and win. So that's that's again, they're using the minutes played argument. No, they're not, though, but they're giving him clutch, even though part of James Harden's case as MVP was that he was clutch because he had to be. They're giving Curry clutch because he won a title? That's not clutch. That's just because he was better. They're giving him clutch because he made that shot in the corner over getting speared by Anthony Davis. (laughs) That was great. That was such a foul. That was ridiculous. Okay, moving on. We have another ridiculous thing, which is ridiculously positive or negative if you're a Giants fan. Zach Greinke of the Dodgers has a crazy scoreless streak going he is at 43 and two-thirds innings he's about two starts away from oral hersheiser's record the craziest thing about all of this is not how good granky's been this will be if he breaks the record the record has been held by a dodger since 1968 don drysdale heard hurled 58 or sorry 50 yeah 58 scoreless frames in 1968 and then in 88 oral hersheiser hurled 59 which is currently the record how has one team held this record since 1968 luck (laughs) <laughs> this record is about luck. Score, scoreless inning streaks are about luck, much like hitting streaks. When you're striking out as many guys as Granke, and he's striking about nine per nine innings, which is pretty good for a starting pitcher. Uh, you know, some guys maybe 10, 11. He's only given up four walks, one hit batsman, and three doubles. That's it. Guys are hitting 150 against him in this streak, slugging 150 against him. Nobody can make solid contact or contact at all against him right now. Clayton Kershaw's the second best pitcher on the Dodgers right now, and that's insane because last year he was the best pitcher or maybe the best player in the world. But for for right now, like we're not saying it's not that Grinky's sustained this unhittability over the entire season or that we're saying he will for the rest of the season. But if he gets to 60 innings, that's one of the major accomplishments in sports. It's a great accomplishment, yes. But I I just think that we can't – this is – Bringing it back to postseason awards, this is the sort of thing where you shouldn't allow this necess- like this amazing accomplishment to overshadow productivity over a whole season when it comes to like evaluating people's seasons at the end of the year. But who's been better than Granke? Scherzer, maybe? Yeah. You think he's? It, and there's still a lot of season to be played, but you definitely have to throw Granke and Scherzer as the one A and one B for the Cy Young right now. Right, and, and so the the thing in my mind if Grinky ba- breaks the record he's probably going to win the Cy Young regardless of whether or not he deserves it yeah and the ERA title is is tough because you know earned runs happen many different ways uh but having an ERA under 2 usually guarantees you some MVP votes not even just Cy Youngs but this is a crazy streak i can't wait to see what happens he's pitching i think against the Mets and Angels next it's going to be hard to keep the Angels scoreless um if you're Don Mattingly what do you do to try to keep this streak going? Do you consider pulling him earlier, or do you just not care? I really hope not. I hope not because in Hershiser wasn't pulled early at all. Grinky's uh, benefiting. Hershiser pitched more innings. Yeah. Uh, in fewer starts than this, he did it in fewer starts than Grinky yeah. would. Uh, so uh, Grinky's having an advantage of not seeing the going through the lineup as often, the same lineup as often as Hershiser did. Right. Well, it's just you, a different era. But but every time you go through the lineup, you're more likely to get hit. Uh, that's absolutely true. Yeah, you can look at the numbers second time through the order, third time through the order. Every time the hitters have so, the advantage. So every time you pull them early, you're diminishing the accomplishment. All right, Zach Greinke, we're going to keep an eye on you. If we do next week's show and he's still scoreless, this is going to be a huge topic. Um, Marcus Mariota signs with the Titans. He's the first, or sorry, the last first round pick to sign with his team. Why was he last? I don't, I don't know I, how this stuff works. I really don't believe that this stuff matters, right? 
Did they want to wait and see what he looked like in camp? Did he want to wait and show them what he looked like in camp before leveraging a bigger deal? Do they want to posture? Do they want to just claim? Do they want to make headlines by being later in the cycle? Do they want to not be overshadowed by other football news? I have no idea. Where where do you fall on the Winston versus Mariota? Who are you who are you looking at this year or in five years to be the most successful? I think Winston's more NFL like NFL ready. Like his game is more tailored for the NFL. Do you think he has the mental game? Because Mariota is a very crisp and clean cut, very polished guy mentally. I think uh, both of these, but young quarterbacks benefit from holding a clipboard. And like, if you can get them on the sideline as a backup, if you can have someone teach them the game, mm-hmm. then yes, I think anyone's anyone's able to be a pro. Like everyone wants to earn that second contract. Right. I think they're both going to start though. That's I. I hate it. I hate it's watching the modern NFL. I hate watching rookie QB start. It's absolutely changed. You know, Blake Bortles is one thing. The Jags were going nowhere. Uh, Tampa Bay actually has a pretty decent roster. Tennessee is kind of a little more in shambles. But uh, if Jameis Winston comes out slinging like maybe Andrew Luck did, not saying he's as good of a prospect or has the future that Andrew Luck does, but I watched him play in some of those bowl games and some of those late-season games. That man can sling the ball around the field. He made too many mistakes to you know immediately make an impact in the pro, and he'll probably throw 20 interceptions next season. But lots of guys do that. I'm just saying everyone had the same sort of, it, does he have the mental preparation conversation when it came to Cam Newton? And look where he is now. Yeah, and he's one of the at least 10, 10 to 15 best quarterbacks in the league. If you want to bump him up to maybe eight or nine, you can. And that's that's a yeah. very successful quarterback no matter where you draft him. If you can get a top 15 quarterback, then you're doing great. I mean, his only downside for his team is his contract. His contract and also the rest of the team still clearing out horrible, horrible contracts that Marty Herney signed. Yeah, it just limits their flexibility. Yeah, they're going to get better. I think the ownership in, in Carolina is going to really support Cam, and he might he's going to bloom in a year or two when he gets an offensive line. All right, let's go to give some love to our sponsors. First off, as always, Bruno's Barbecue and Catering in Kings Village Shopping Center in Scotts Valley. They've got ribs, burgers, steaks, and all of my favorite things. The sides are great. Macaroni and cheese, garlic toast, it's all delicious. Veggies, if you feel like. They do have veggies. Uh, Melted cheese on chicken breast, mushrooms, broccoli, carrots. That's a nice, healthy meal with some cheese added on to it. Bruno's also has 12 beer taps and a full bar. They welcome large parties and banquets in their spacious upstairs loft that has its own bar and TV for parties and fun things. Our other sponsor at the top of the show is Ken Keegan, my friend and local artist. We are proud to have Ken on board, a big baseball fan. His Mets lost today to the Dodgers. Thanks, Ken. Good work. You can find his art for sale and to view on artwanted.com by searching Art Wanted and Ken Keegan. You'll find him. He's got dozens of his works up there. We've given some away. We're going to have him on again, hopefully soon, to give out some more of his works. Thank you again, Ken Keegan. You're a good friend and a good man. All right, we're going to start the portion of our show called Baseball Nerd Fest. We're going to bring on a guy who has done all the legwork for all the sabermetric community for years and years now. We're going to bring on a guy called Dan Zimborski. Uh If you don't know about Zips, he created Zips. It's a baseball projection system. It's one of the coolest things. Anything you want, he can get you. We're going to talk to Dan right now. How are you doing, Dan? Hey, I'm doing well. I'm kind of hungry. You guys are talking about meat and cheese and everything, so <laughs> I'm thinking I need to get some barbecue. You are on with Thomas and Joaquin on Coach's Decision. I love talking to you, Dan. I've talked to you a bunch of times. You do video games. You do food news. You do everything. You do a little bit of politics here and there. What don't you do? Well, I stay away from politics when I can. That is an explicit issue on Twitter. Oh, I'm sorry. That's that's Keith Law. I try to keep people from hating me too much. Okay, good. Sorry, that was Keith Law. I got you guys confused there for a second. I just want people to hate me a little bit. Okay. So I stay away from the politics. All right, so, so in about 30 seconds, sum up to our fans and our listeners, what is your projection system? What is Zips? Well, Zips is a projection system, as you said. Uh, It gives, based on data in the past, it gives kind of, you know, rough estimates of how a player's future is going to be. Of course, the future is very unknown, so there's a wide variability of what could happen. But it's nice to have a projection system because it cuts through the numbers and it kind of gives you an objective first place to look. So that is awesome. I, I love reading your articles, too, the way you integrate uh, your own work and other people's work. And also, almost everyone in the baseball community looks to you and uses your numbers to, uh, to write some really good stuff. I'm a big fan of all of that. So here we go. According to your projection system, because you also project playoff odds and teams and how they're playing, who are the World Series favorites in each league? I know it's still kind of early, but it's starting to shake out. 
Well, I mean, it can vary depending on the exact contours of the race at any given time. But right now, it's the Dodgers and the Royals. So the Cardinals not getting the love. The Dodgers look like they're the team. Uh, by, a, by a small margin. Uh, since Zips, uh, one of the things about Zips, it knows what it doesn't know as well as what it knows. It knows that there is a lot that you can't really project with great accuracy. So it gives you odds of things. Uh, it likes the Dodgers the best of the NL, but it's very close between them and the Cardinals. Uh, it, the NL is kind of in a weird place right now. I think probably the five best teams in baseball are in the NL right now. So it's, it's kind of interesting. That's kind of a Western Conference NBA thing where it's all heavy on one side. So you said in the American League, the Royals, what, who are their biggest contender? What, what is the big contender for the Royals? Who, who could unseat them? Uh, well, really, the biggest enemy of the Royals, I think, is the schedule. Simply because I don't, they're 56 and 36 right now. Uh, I don't think they're that good a team. Uh, but they have a six and a half game lead over the Twins, a ten and a half game lead over the Tigers. Uh, so even if they're only a 500 team or a little better than, than thereabouts, it's really going to be hard to catch them because of the amount of time left in the schedule. Even if you think the Tigers are a better team, making up 10 games over less than half a season is a really difficult thing to do. Well, and according to Bob Nightingale, the Tigers are thinking strongly about selling and just punting this year. What do you think about that? I think it makes sense for them to wait as long as possible because what we're seeing now is kind of the slow-motion deterioration of the Tigers. Every year they trade some of their players away, bring in some win-now guys. But their farm system is extremely empty at this moment. Uh, it would be hard to really – I'm not sure if they even have the prospects to bring in Mike Leak. Uh, oh, let boy. alone Johnny Cueto uh, or, or Cole Hamels or someone like that. But I think that they should push that decision as far towards the end of July as they can uh, because one of the things is you want to make sure that you are out of the race and that those wins may not like, get you into the playoffs. And that's that's a pretty big deal. Well, and what you said about the Royals, it's it's easier for them because those wins are banked. If they haven't been as good as a 56 and 36 team, they still get to keep those 56 wins, so that's useful. Yeah, people always say, well, why did the odds change? I'm like, well, when things happen, the odds change. Like, if you play poker, you have a pair of aces, the other guy has a pair of kings, a king drops. All of a sudden, the odds have changed drastically. Uh, there's no set number of hot streaks and cold streaks that each team has kind of programmed into there. Uh, the Royals, those 56 wins are not going away. They're there, they're written, they're in the record. Nothing's taking them away unless baseball has some really weird rules that I'm unaware of. So I, I read a really interesting article from you about this season, and it's been fascinating, the rookie class. Um, I've been watching Jock Peterson, Chris Bryant, Carlos Correa, these guys, and you actually ranked the rookie classes of the history of baseball. What does this year look like compared to years past? Uh, well, I ranked also extrapolating towards the end of the season because obviously there's still quite a bit of 2000. Zips is law, Dan. Zips is law. Rest of season zips always happens. I, I would like that to be true. <laughs> You'd make so well, much maybe, more money. <laughs> yeah, it would be extremely profitable. But on the other side, it would also be kind of boring. I mean, as profitable as always being right would be, it, it kind of would take the fun out of it. So you had it as a, a top 10 class all-timer, in the, in the top 10% at least. Uh, yeah, it was, they were, I had them at 11th all-time. And really, all the other... There was three or four other seasons in the 2010s that rank highly. We are at a wonderful time for rookie hitters. Even as offense has dropped off the board, just the amount of talent that, that's come up in the, in the majors the last few years, it's like, a, it's like a generational shift that we're seeing. So if I had to put those three guys that I mentioned, uh, Peterson, Bryant, and Correa, into a, a hat, and you had to pick one, and which, who would you be hoping you pulled out? Oh, that is a tough one. I... I think I'd still go with Chris Bryant just because his power potential is just crazy. Uh, that, that's a hard one, and I don't think the MLBPA would let you put players in a hat. Well, they put them in hats every day, but never two guys I mean, in there one are, hat. There are rules about travel and accommodations, <laughs> and you're talking about stuffing rookies in hats. That's, well, that's hazing. How, how many people can you fit in those uh, pitcher-protected hats? At least two guys, right? It, it depends. It'd have to be small guys. Um, uh, I you, you you would have to discuss it with the union though. Uh, okay, we're I not getting. They're they're a powerful union. I'm not getting them on the blower. Work. Is it like a is it like the clown? Does it work the same way as clown cars though? Because clown cars don't 
obey physics. So maybe you could put like 20 players in a hat using the same underlying science that clowns utilize. Okay, I have a question for you. So baseball caps go out of fashion. What is the next selection of hats that MLB chooses to don their players in? Is it pork pie? Is it stovetop? Stovepipe? Think, stovetop is I a stuff in a stovepipe. Yeah, I think stovetop. Uh, I think, well, you, you could get a, you could get a, um, advertising with stovetop working that out. But Thank you, Dan. I think, I think it's time for the top hat to come back in. Because top hats are classy. Now, do you need a chin strap for that, or do those fit snug? I haven't worn one in a while. I think it depends on the on the shape of your head. I mean, I have a giant head, so once I squeeze the hat on, it's not going anywhere. But someone who has a thin head might have trouble with, with a baseball top hat. I've seen your Twitter avatar. I thought you just shot it from low and up close. No, that's just the size of your head? Yeah, I, I have a giant head. <laughs> I, I kind of look like a, a, a beach caricature. All right. Well, one last question before we let you go, Dan. Uh, Barry Bonds had his day in court, and I have some opinions about this. Do you? Oh, I always have opinions. <laughs> I thought it was a giant waste of taxpayer money and time. Giant. Good pun. Uh, Good pun. I, I didn't even intend that. <laughs> the, the trite puns just come naturally. Uh, but really, you don't see a lot of federal perjury prosecutions, and very rarely do you see a a federal perjury prosecution of a lie that would have been a misdemeanor drug offense uh, in a trial in which they got their guy anyway. Uh, it was just kind of an example. And the thing is, if you make an example and it's a bad example, you just kind of undermine your own attempts. I, I totally agree with you. I, I read what Victor Connie had to say, and if you want to look it up, this is a man who spent four months in jail and four months under house arrest, and he thought it was ridiculous that Barry Bonds was being brought before a grand jury. Yeah, well, you, you read, I even forget, I forget the IRS agent's name, Chris something, who was really into getting Bonds. Uh, it was just kind of thing, because, you know, Bonds tends to get people's gander up, and I guess the problem is, is there's a difference between being like a fan or a writer that's mad at Bonds and someone with the power of prosecution getting mad at Bonds. All right, Dan, well, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, where can we find your work? ESPN.com, ESPN the magazine, any other links you want to throw out? Well, just generally ESPN.com and anywhere the Google man tells you I am. <laughs> and we're going to spell your last name with an S-Z-Y to start it off, right? Yeah, if you get the S-Z-Y and there's an M and a B and an R and there's a ski at the end, the Google man will figure it out. And we've got the Google man on our side because we're just south of Silicon Valley, so he is with us. Yeah, you get all the, the scoops. All right, thanks, Dan. We'll read your work. Thanks for coming on the show. You have a good one, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I love Dan. Oh, he's so great. He doesn't take his job too seriously. Do you think the IRS guy was mad at Bonds for having a recliner in the clubhouse? I think Jeff Kent's still mad about <laughs> Barry Bonds having a recliner in the clubhouse. More the big screen TV then? Yeah. I, I like Dan because he doesn't take himself seriously because his work is very serious. It's math, it's analytical, but he likes to have fun. Well, he's already put in the time. He's developed the system. That's true, and he has time to put a sense of humor on it, which is great. All of our listeners out there wondering about Zips and about Grinky should go look about at how he's not the best pitcher in the week right now. Ooh, that's an interesting one. We can't really sabermetrically break down everything because we don't have two hours but we do have time for a live read 99 bottles on walnut and pacific downtown 99 bottles is the prime spot for dining and entertainment in downtown santa cruz drink selections from domestic to hard to find beers to a full bar it's literally hundreds of choices to work your way through drink enough they will build bricks into the wall with your name on them i am not a foundational member of that place but i'm going to get a couple bricks we need to put in work, Thomas. I, I, I brick a lot of basketball shots. I have not bricked myself onto the wall quite yet. Uh, trivia night with Marisa on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Right now, in fact. Those who know me know I love trivia. I am the trivia guy. I love Marisa. She loves me. She does audio questions, TV themes, one-hit wonders. Also, you can head down there and watch sports. They play soccer. They play the Warriors. They play the Giants and A's. They'll put on any sport you can dream up. TV's behind the bar. Big TV upstairs. Much love to 99 Bottles. Thank you for sponsoring our show today. All right. This is our segment we typically call Calls and Balls because we're ridiculous. We're just going to go with balls today. We have a lot of stuff to talk about, Joaquin. Let's go. Becky Hammond. Speaking of no balls, mm -hmm. Becky Hammond wins a summer league title with the Spurs, is the first full-time paid female assistant in NBA history. This is a completely unprecedented story how close are we to the glass ceiling being completely broken? I don't think we're that close, actually. 
I how many years do you think she needs of assistantude and and coachdom to make her way up, or at least get an NCAA job or something? I think that basketball is where it would have to happen because it's a smaller team, right? And so you can get a more close knit group, and there aren't as many. Uh, the, it's just not as raw raw because everyone's more personal. But I don't think that it's going to be one person that breaks their way through from uh, from being an assistant to a head coach. I think we're gonna we're gonna see multiple assistants and over multiple years. But why say, take NCAA men's basketball or even NCAA women's basketball? NCAA women's basketball, I think it's about 40% of the coaches are female. And that makes sense that it would be more than the men's. And I can I can get on board with that. But it should be higher in women's basketball. But it should also start happening in men's. There's 350, 400, whatever Division One teams there are. Chattanooga State. There's Western Wichita local government team. I think team. It, it, takes a, it takes a long time for people to be uh, culturally acclimated to taking instruction from a female coach. I don't think it's just a sudden change that you'd expect. I think it has to be normalized for people. But I mean, a couple years ago, Nancy Lieberman, famous basketball player from the 80s and 90s and 2000s, she was the D-League's Texas Legends coach. You know, she had a relationship with the Mavericks. Uh, She decided to take a more managerial role with the team and focus on her family and stuff. Why, can't, why shouldn't this be happening more, though? Becky Hammond played 16 seasons in the WNBA. Why is Cheryl Miller not involved with the team? Why do these legends of, of WNBA... It very, well, it very well could be happening more. It should be happening more. Right. And I think we will see it happen more. But I don't think it's going to be an overnight change. Right. Of course, it's not going to be an overnight change. But Pop is the man who could make this happen. Because Pop is so influential. His coaching tree is so big. Also, his players trust him completely. Right. There's no there's no internal struggle from the players on the team to say, oh, we don't agree with this decision. If you don't agree with the choice pop makes, you're off the team. Yeah. And my favorite thing that everyone has been saying, including pop, is that she knows when to talk and she knows when to shut up. And well, I think that's every coach's you that, know, what you have to do to know how to coach or even how to be an athlete. Know yeah, when to talk and know coaching when not is to as talk. much about what's not said, like not bringing in negative factors that you're that are going to distract your team. Right, so I'm absolutely rooting for Becky Hammond because I think I think it's something that should happen, and somebody with that much experience in the game, on in any gender, the game is similar enough that it should be happening. Yeah, right congrats now. to her for winning the D or the summer league title. What is it, seven games, a seven game series? Well, at least the Spurs won a seven game series, so that's good. Uh, our next story: the NFL lawyers and the Department of Justice. Uh, some documents got leaked about sports gambling and its potential legalization. So we have a different take on this. I'm ready for the NFL to support sports gambling. I'm ready for sports gambling to be able to happen because I believe, like these documents show, that it is a skill game. That it is not luck. It is not a casino. It is not a blackjack table. Betting on sports is a skill. Uh, the NFL lawyers argued that. The Department of Justice admitted that. What do you think? Oh, I, I agree, actually. I think I think uh, sports betting is definitely a skill game, and you can see that it's skillful just based on how odds makers move lines based on how certain bettors bet. Our friend H-Bob, who bets on basketball in Vegas and makes a killing, he is influencing these lines with his own set of skills. Yes, and also you have uh, people uh, even just take, let's take our friend Dan Zip's projection system as just uh, something we're pulling out of the blue to consider. People develop uh, statistical models that help them in betting. Like He could have not released that to the public and then made futures bets, and that would be an example of his skill in projecting baseball. Why, why then does Roger Goodell not support this? Adam Silver of the NBA, the commissioner of the NBA, supports this wholly. He thinks it will grow his sport, it will grow his brand. He sees no problem with it culturally. Why does Roger Goodell not want this to happen, even though the NFL's lawyers are producing pro arguments for so it. So the NFL is arguing in court that it's a, a matter of skill, right, and not luck, but Roger Goodell doesn't need to say anything positive about betting. Right, but see, that's part of the whole NFL's thing, is th- it would not be a popular league if it wasn't so much fun to gamble on. It wouldn't be the shield. But it it's, ar- be- it's already established. Right, but now guys are going around their neighborhood and betting with their neighbors, and why shouldn't it be that they can go down to the corner store and place a few bets? Well, apparently we already let them sign up for daily fantasy sports and gamble legally that way. Right, the NFL has made so much money on fantasy because it's the best to play fantasy, it's the best to bet on with your friends, it's the best to bet on in Vegas or, or offshore casinos, but bring it into the fold. I think America is ready for this. Roger Goodell, stop lying. There's no way that daily fantasy sports especially isn't gambling. 
That's yeah. exactly what it is. Ro- Roger Goodell needs to stop lying. Like, well, I can say that every week until the rest of the – Bill Simmons hey, don't is Simmons back, us. by the way. No, no, no. Bill Simmons is back. Everybody listening right now, he's been dormant for, what, three months now? Bill Simmons is coming back to HBO uh, he's going to have a weekly show. He's going to have podcasts. No one is more excited than Joaquin and I. Without Bill Simmons, we wouldn't be friends. We wouldn't have a show. Thank you, Bill. We're happy to have you back. I can't wait. Without Bill Simmons, I know far less about baseball than I would. Where would Jalen Rose be? <laughs> Where would Jacoby be? Exactly. All right. This is the portion of our show where we bring on our friend Chad Oakland Jolin. He's a good man. He waited patiently. We have something to talk about, Chad, but first of all, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. How about you guys? You guys good? Doing great. Doing great. We're having a great show so far. We need to talk about something we talked about last week when you so kindly co-hosted with me. We talked about Jimbo Fisher, and I screamed my head off saying that this man needs to be fired. He needs to resign. At least he apologized, sort of. He said he was disappointed in his program, and he took some accountability and said, this is my fault. I need to fix this. What did you read into his statement? I mean, it was it was really good, but you got to take it with a grain of salt just because of what he said. You know, well, it happens everywhere, and that is such a cop out. It's it's true. It's 100% true. Not saying it's not, but you got caught. It happened at your school under your nose, and you're under scrutiny for it. That was where it lost some credibility to me. But it was very good to see him not just neglect it and not just try and push the blame on other people and take some of the responsibility himself. See, I didn't know Jimbo Fisher listened to our show, because I said I was disappointed, and he said he's disappointed. Well, do we think Florida State needs Jimbo Fisher? Absolutely. Okay. Florida State, need, he's the the heir to Bobby Bowden. That was their guy for 30-plus years, or however long he was well, there. Well, apparently Bobby Bowden knew how to not get caught. Yeah, well, Bobby Bowden lived in the 70s, 80s, and 90s when there weren't cameras everywhere, and guys hitting women, and everyone finding out about it in bars. Um, but no, this is their guy. They've tied their wagon. College football coaches are gods. You know, Urban Meyer, wherever he goes, is revered. Uh, Jim Harbaugh eschewed the NFL so he could go be a god at Michigan. Nick so, Saban. Yeah, Nick Saban. So Florida State needs Jimbo Fisher, just like Jimbo Fisher needs Florida State. But he needs to get his program in order. I just wanted to bring that up because Chad and I talked about it last week. And I'm, I'm actually glad to see some progress, and we hope that there's some more. Chad, you're angry today, aren't you? I'm a little bit angry. What are we angry about? Just, we want to be angry about basketball. Can we be angry about basketball? Yeah, we're angry about basketball, just about kind of the whole NBA, if that's an okay statement to make. you a whole league under the bus right Not now? Not a whole league, just how part of that league operates, how, okay. how it's unfolded over the last 50 years. Okay, Joaquin, I want you to listen hard to Chad. And I want some – you're my I'm guy. I'm ready. You're my NBA you're ready? guy. All right, so this is one of my biggest problems is you look at a team like the Warriors, you know, when was it? Last time they won a championship, they weren't even on this coast. Seven, no, 75. Yeah, they were. So it's been a long time. I want to talk about the unfair power dispersion. How you have the Lakers and the Celtics winning 33 of 65, 33 of 68 this year titles. If you go back to 2010, that's 33 of 63. What my question to you guys is, you know, when you have these destinations like Boston, L.A., you know, Miami, what it was a couple of years ago, what do you do if you're the GM of the Milwaukee Bucks? What do you do if you're an unattractive destination that doesn't have the money? Do you just have to keep on forfeiting and not being able to compete, or how do you get yourself out of that? It's not even about having the money, though, now, because they all have money from the revenue sharing and the hard cap. But we're realizing now that basketball is an international sport. It's an international brand. Twitter is everywhere. Facebook is everywhere. These guys are public figures no matter where they go. This is the first uh, NBA offseason where free agents have eschewed larger destinations or smaller destinations. Greg Monroe went to the Bucks. That was huge for them. Yeah, so Greg, you have Greg Monroe uh, ignoring New York, going to the Bucks. You have LaMarcus Aldridge rebuffing both the Knicks and the Lakers and going to the Spurs. But the Spurs are part of that thing that Chad's talking about with all these titles. But, only, re- these but only recently. Of you course. Have to, like, so if we, if we uh, step away and look at how the titles come, to, when they come in bunches, right, the the Celtics have won one title since 1990, right? And then, but the Spurs have won, and the Spurs and the Bulls have won all their titles since 1990. Right, six and five, so five and six respectively. So it's a shift. It's a shifting of gears. Sure, the Lakers are still prevalent. Lakers have been present in every decade, and they've been successful the entire time. But that's that's one example. That becomes when you have one team, maybe that's the exception, not the rule. 
But those teams that Chad brought up, the Lakers and the Celtics, both swung and missed this offseason pretty hard. You know, they thought they had everything in line. Turns out LaMarcus Aldridge didn't like the way they treated the game of basketball, which is a travesty to be one of those franchises and not have guys in your organization who know how to make a basketball presentation. Not a glitz and glamour, not a Jamie Foxx, not a let's get Marty Scorsese out here to talk about Goodfellas in front of you. Basketball. But did they swing and miss? They got Roy Hibbert. <laughs> I think Lou Williams is the signing they're going to bank on for the rest of the that's, year. That's not a bad signing. I mean, that's a good – they have backcourt depth now if, if he Kobe is the Bryant captain now. is something. <laughs> I just watched that movie. <laughs> I love Captain Phillips. Um, so, yeah, to your point, Boston has won a lot of championships. A lot of that was back when they had the best player and the best coach and in an eight team teams. league. We know this. So you can even throw those titles out. The modern NBA starts when? Uh, the merger, 76, sure, 79. Sure, let's say post-merger. You know, how many titles does the Celtics have after that? Three, uh, three, three in the one. 80s. Or how many? Oh, seven, three in the 80s and one in 2008. So four. Yeah. That's not that bad. I think it's getting better. But like you said, it was hard for the Warriors to win a championship. because they, And they do have to pay the tax in order to do it. They do have to uh, have an owner who has a lot of money to do it. They do have to focus on... Uh, uh, attendance and keeping their revenue stream up. A lot of teams can't do that. You play in Oklahoma City, they're not making that much well, money. The Oklahoma City Thunder did have a window. They have, they, they're still within their title window. I think their window has hardened. And, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, but I love that we're talking about the Bucks here too, because the Bucks in a, in a few ways remind me of where the Warriors were before in terms of having a young talent that has time to gel together. Like right. maybe Michael, maybe Michael Carter Williams isn't a great outside shooter right now, but they've brought him in after he won rookie of the year. They have Giannis, they have Jabari, and they have a young core that's going to gel together and they could, they could be, they, they're going to make it to the playoffs again this year and they could be in the hunt to make it to the finals in the following year. So here's the opposite extreme. And I, I've thought a lot about this like you have, Chad. I, I'm glad you brought this up. In the NHL, it's such a hard cap and it's such a weird league that new teams win almost every year. You know? NFL. The NFL a little bit less because the Patriots were a thing. <laughs> now, and they're kind of an outlier in the NFL because they were so good for so long and still are. But the NHL has new champions every year. Teams in Carolina, team Tampa Bay Lightning win. You know, the Avalanche got a cup. The Blackhawks are back. Right, but random teams get cups all the time. That doesn't happen in, in the NBA. You know, there was no almost no chance ever for the Atlanta Hawks to win a, a title in the last 30 years. You know, it's not going to happen for them. But I, th- I think that is more about the poor decision-making of the front offices. And I think some things have really helped. Like, the, the lottery system has helped. And... Having a salary cap has helped and having more restriction on how, what sort of contracts can be given out and things like the stretch provision and the exceptions. Like all of this is like the salary cap minutia has helped, uh, like develop a healthier league with a better parity. All right, Chad, I want you to sit in with these next couple conversations. We're actually just going to have you on the rest of the show because you're a good man. Sounds good. Shaq and Pippen. Pippen awesome. and Shaq. Shaq versus Pippen. This is an insane Instagram war. It's the worst one I've seen yet as far as bad photoshops and as far as guys yelling rings over and over again. Rings. rings. So Shaq posts about the greatest Lakers of all time, their starting five, would beat the greatest Bulls of all time, their starting five. Let's get, look at if you have I'm, time. I'm staring right at look it Look right at the now. pictures. Are there any Bulls players from before uh, Jordan? Absolutely not. There are two bulls on this, the guys that don't belong. Dennis Rodman and Horace Grant, great players, do not belong on this list. Not on the greatest bulls of all time list? Not in the top five. Really? Well, maybe for the position. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. But uh, also, Shaq probably doesn't make this list. Where's Wilt? Why is Wilt not the starting no, Wilt Shaq list? makes the list. Shaq definitely makes the list. Position by position. Okay, Magic, Kobe, uh, Kareem, uh, Elgin Baylor, and... And Wilt, it's not no, Shaq. No, it's definitely Shaq. Because Shaq, Shaq was than Kareem? the most. He was the most dominant player in the game. He's well, better than Kareem. No, and you he's we're than saying. Wilt. I'm saying that Shaq on the Shaq's peak years on the Lakers were better than Wilt's peak years on the Lakers. That's Wilt's, ridiculous. Wilt on the Wilt on the Sixers. Wilt on the Warriors. Okay. You take that Wilt maybe over Shaq. Okay. But Shaq in 2000 and 2001 on the Lakers. You have to take that player on your all-time great so team. So those lineups I read, uh, obviously Shaq, Kareem, Elgin Baylor, Kobe, Magic Johnson, do they beat 
Jordan, Pippen, yes. Robin, Horace Grant, yes. and Derrick Rose yes. by 50 yes. points. No question. No, not yeah. by well, not that, 50. That was the accusation. Yeah, but that's just Shaq being Shaq. Okay. And you ha- and the fact that you have to scrounge, so you have to scrounge for Bulls big men. You have Horace Grant, who left the Bulls uh, to play for the Magic after the first three P, and then Rodman, who was only on the team for the second three P. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Pippen fires back. Obviously, him smoking a cigar with Michael Jordan says, "Sorry, Shaq, and it I don't says get rings, caught up." Right? The whole caption is rings. Uh, I've got twice the amount of rings that you have. Well, twice he, Pippen with the Bulls, twice Shaq with the. Lakers. Of course, Shaq won another one with Miami. Of course, part of the Miami Mafia. So Shaq fires back, and now he's got Photoshop. Well, so Shaq has Shaq has nothing to say to that because Shaq is Shaq's whole argument in the first place is that because you have dudes on your team who can't guard me and Kareem, we're gonna beat you. His right. argument has nothing to do with how good Pippen and Jordan are. So then he starts attacking Pippen personally, of course, saying yeah, that he has nothing left. Saying he's a sidekick. Remember, I was Batman, you was Robin, I was Puffy, you was Mace. Ignore the hip hop references. That has that has Kobe, things that we could talk about me. forever. Tell no, me. no, 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 no. <laughs> Let's not get into the singing career. Also, Shaq photoshops Scottie Pippen's face onto a T-Mobile sidekick. That was the best jab. That That's had to great. Be. That's just a great joke. <laughs> you gotta really hand it to joke. him. I got a pretty good sidekick. You can find him here with this phone. Pippen attacks Shaq's free throws. Blah 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 blah. Pippen's best one, though. Hey, he made him when he counted. <laughs> He's got five pictures. He's got Shaq with Hardaway, Shaq with Kobe, Shaq with Dwayne Wade, Shaq with Steve Nash, and Shaq with LeBron. Calling Shaq the sidekick in all five of those situations. Should have put him next to KG. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, also, then Shaq finally wins by posting a simulated video footage of Kobe and the Blazers. That, that was the best caption. See what happens when you don't have Jordan guarding you, Ooh. and then Kobe throws the alley oop. That was yeah. good. That was that was that the Blazers spine team. Rattler. That Blazers team was so painful. If they just, oh, if they just had their stuff together. If, if they Sabonis just... was just ten years younger. <laughs> If Steve Kerr was just a little taller and a little more athletic. We did not do this Instagram battle justice. Please go and look at this feed. It is so awesome. We're going to do some quick Check stories. Check out the show notes. So, or we'll put it in the show notes. Thank you, Joaquin. Before we go, some quick takes. Pacers are going to wear the Hoosiers jerseys, the uh, Hickory High Hoosiers jerseys. Love what it. do you think? Yeah, sell more jerseys, NBA. Go for it. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it's marketing. <laughs> we <laughs> Makes gotta, sense. we got to squeeze us into a couple of those jerseys. I don't know if they... I don't know that they make them with sleeves, Thomas. Oh, man, i got to work on my farmer's tan then. Uh, Ty Lawson to the Rockets, two DUI since January. Can this work? The Rockets, uh, it's a great deal for the Rockets because they managed to convince Lawson to make the second year of the contract non-guaranteed. So if he doesn't shape it up, fly right, then they can cut him. So this is, it's just, they're getting a guy who is playing like an MVP candidate for the first 40 games, 10 assists a game, most drives per game in the league. It's just great for the Rockets. Which acquisition do you like the best? Seth Curry to the Kings, Pablo Prigioni to the Clippers, Jimmer to the Spurs? Seth. No, it's Jimmer Watch. No, Come Seth, on. Seth, Seth, Seth. You love Vivek, Vivek just trying to imitate the Warriors? You have to love it. Well, at least he's not asking anyone to cherry pick. I did see Seth Curry destroy my Michigan State Spartans when he was at Duke. I will never forget that, and I hate it. All right, a last live read today. Our sponsor is Bruno's Barbecue. Did you know Bruno's will come to you? They like to cater. We've mentioned their storefront location. If you're having a summer party, a birthday party, a wedding, anything you need, they will come feed an army of strangers for you. Bruno's should be your first call. The original California barbecue. For a catering deal, call 831-GET-BBBQ. That's 438-2227. Thank you to Bruno's Catering. Also, once again, thank you to Ken Keegan, my good friend. Go to artwanted.com. Look for his art. He paints everything he sees around him. A wonderful guy, a wonderful sponsor. Speaking of wonderful, this is my favorite part of the show. Tori comes on, producer Tori, to give us her Tori topics. I hear you have some stuff in for us today. I am so excited right now. Go. Let's go. Warner Brothers filed a new trademark for Space Jam last month. Today, they announced an entertainment deal with LeBron. Come on and slam, and welcome to the jam. I don't want it to be LeBron, though. Oh, no. I want it to be. Who do you want it to be? Nick Young. (laughs) <laughs> Swag Griffin. And so the the end Aww. of the movie is Nick Young putting one up from half court and then turning around as it bricks as and it he's bricks sold up. into intergalactic slavery. The opening scene, he's shooting free throws with his dad. And you know how uh, Jordan's dad says, oh, shoot till you miss. Yeah. Yeah. Nick Young's dad says, shoot, shoot till t- you make one, son. <laughs> we'll eat dinner once you make one. Or, or he and his dad are playing two on zero and his dad says, keep playing until you pass it. <laughs> So wait, what are the implications of this? Because Space Jam, like Cool Runnings, we're going to keep it full circle. One of the most influential movies on me in the 90s. We're celebrating the 20th anniversary coming up. 
What do they, they redo it with the Warner Brothers I characters? Think, do they do a new plot line? I think the major implication is the Quad City DJs are getting a phone oh, call. Oh, they're getting a phone call. And, come on, let's get R. Kelly back involved. Oh, do we have to? The remix to I Believe I Why don't fly? we just get Chris Brown? Oh, man, he can show his dance. I'm, I'm afraid of Chris Brown. He goes Sorry. nowhere near Sorry. your kids' movies pictures. No, that's not going to happen. But I think it should be Nick Young. You, you think Blake Griffin, Tori? Blake Griffin and Chris Paul. Come on. Uh, who, who I, mean, I mean, a little young, but Steph Curry? He, okay. he's, he's got that aura about him. Riley gets to be in it. Ooh, there you go. I can't right. say no to Riley. Maybe, maybe the the guys come back from, what was it, Kook Mountain, what was it called? <laughs> oh. And they kidnap Riley, and then Seth has Steph has to team up with Seth and get some friends together. And they I have can't to, think of the name of the mountain they were from. It's like an amusement park yeah. where they wanted to sell basketball players. Yeah. I don't know what they were. It's like a zoo for basketball players. It's a really weird movie. Yeah, So, respect. but maybe, maybe they kidnap Riley, and then Steph has to go get her back. It could be, oh, if it's CP3 and Steph, it could be a, a commercial even. It could just be, they kidnap uh, Seth and Cliff. And Cliff Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Seth Curry and Cliff Paul get kidnapped. Riley and Steph have to team up and play basketball to get them back. And they convince CP3 to put differences aside. And Aisha puts the whole thing on Instagram. <laughs> this is going to happen, Warner Brothers. Give Coach's decision a call. We have some ideas. Yeah, we have a you. treatment for you. Uh, we could pitch it tomorrow. We can drive to L.A. right now. I am available. I am 100% Road trip. available. Road Let's do it. Road trip. All right, Tori, next topic. All right. Uh, also fun, there is a warrant out for Ocho Cinco's arrest. Uh, he skipped an arraignment for driving on a suspended license. Hmm. Uh, please, God, let this be the bottom of the barrel for off-season football news. Did he say, ciao, please, just bounce? Uh, on his Twitter, he admitted to, or he admitted that it was a thing by saying, God damn Sun City tolls or something hey, like that. Hey, you're not allowed to swear on this show. You're going to get dumped talking like that. Uh, Chad Ochocinco, drive with a suspended license. That's fine. Appear your court date. Just don't drive drunk like Ty Lawson. Yes. At least be the fun NFL player who gets busted or the fun athlete who gets and busted. Just continue to buy discount fake diamond earrings and convince everyone that they're real because you're Chad Johnson. I remember, That's all we want. Cubic zirconia, man. <laughs> I remember the, the segment on Sports Center where they showed him going to McDonald's every morning before practice. If he's still doing that, I don't think it's going to end well for him. Do you remember what he said? What did he say? You can eat however you want as long as you treat your body right. <laughs> Something, something to that effect. He said, kiss the baby. Like, you gotta love him. Kiss the baby. All right, Tori, next topic, no swearing. Uh, your boy, Draymond. Draymond Green, okay. I'm plans listening. to accept an invite to the Team USA minicamp in August. Now, that is the kind of player that needs to play international basketball, because those referees are going to be horribly frustrated with him, and vice versa. Well, he doesn't he doesn't abuse the gather step rule, so that'll be useful for him. Well, that's why Kendrick Perkins has never played. <laughs> He's walking <laughs> the, all over the court. The gather carry. Uh, see, Draymond can't snatch the ball off the top of the rim, though, so it's maybe not the best idea. Yeah, but he can hit it. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I hope Draymond plays for Team USA. I like the idea of grittier players and not necessarily Carmelo. We don't need Carmelo Anthony on the team anymore. Carmelo Anthony is the great, one of the greatest international basketball players I of all totally time. agree, but his time has passed. Let it be Durant. Let it be Draymond. Well, let it be the younger guys. Steph and Clay lit it up last summer, so why can't we just send the whole Warriors squad? That's not that's a oh, homegrown. I would love to see Mar Spates overseas. Mo Spates? <laughs> 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 more buckets, more ladies, more burgers. I mean, I, he space. could hit the international three, probably. He can. I know he can. All right, Tori, next topic. Uh, let's see. Let's go for some trash talk. Star Wars Day at the National Stadium. Every Dodger player was shown on the Jumbotron as a stormtrooper. What do you think, Chad? I mean, it's, once again, good marketing. <laughs> You're just going to, you got to milk your day, I guess. But and the Dodgers are the funny. bad guys. They are that's, the bad guys. They've always had that aura. They're kind of like the Cowboys. Everyone seems you either love them or you hate them. It's yeah. the blue. Well, and I saw, I saw they had way back Wednesday today at Petco Park. So they were showing all these weird factoids about the Giants players and Photoshopping things about them. So it was like, Justin Maxwell has a 35-pound cat or whatever. Or, or no, it was Matt Duffy has a 35-pound cat named Schnookums. And they just Photoshopped him holding a cat. Uh, Justin Maxwell hit a ball that hit Henry Schulman in the press box last night. Don't worry, Hank's okay. It's just this really, like, jovial scoreboard play, and I think teams need to get more interesting in the ballpark because people are on their phones almost the entire game, and I don't blame them. The phone is fun. The game can be kind of boring. I mean, part of going to the game now is, I guess, telling everyone you went to the game. Right, taking pictures of your Dodger dog or whatever hot dog you're eating. Mm -hmm. 
That was a that was a penis joke. Okay, next topic, Tori. Mark Cuban on DeAndre. Makeup oh, sex no. is always the best sex, but after it's over, you stare at that same face and realize the problems are the same. Makeup sex expert Mark Cuban. <laughs> Did he? How did he find out about it? Doctor Drew. Dust, Do- Doctor, Doctor Drew. He really got into his psyche and his sexual history to teach him about this. I have no idea what he's talking about. Well, also the Clippers aren't the same team. They picked up Jan- Josh Smith. They picked up he Paul Pierce. Bunch they picked of new up, guys to have sex. They picked with. up Lance. <laughs> Can have sex with them. Lance will make him now. dance. Oh my goodness. Mark Cuban is just a very butt hurt dude on Tinder at this point. Oh. He's, but, he's butt hurt from the makeup sex. I'm going to tell you that. So here's a sad fact. Uh, Peyton Manning has as many touchdown passes in his career as the Cleveland Browns do since 1983. What? In 15 extra years. 15 extra years the Cleveland Browns can't come up with more touchdowns than Peyton Manning. Bernie Kosar, I want a public statement. I want an apology. Eric Zaire, Vinny Testaverde, uh, Spurgeon Wynn, Tim Couch, all of these guys need to publicly apologize. I don't for know this. why you're putting Bernie Kosar in, Kosar in with all of those other dudes. Did you see Bernie Kosar on the 30 for 30, the U? They pulled him straight from a cabana. Mm-hmm. He had sunglasses on, his hair was a mess, and he was wearing a Hawaiian shirt. I'm just saying, Tim Couch, you don't have to put Bernie in with that. They had to backlight him so that you couldn't see the drink in his hand. <laughs> Bernie Kosar, you are amazing, but you should have thrown more touchdowns.